We're in Work Packet 3.1, and we're on pages 5 and 6 for this video. So we're going to go for parallel lines and transversals. Um, in the last video, we took two lines, and we crossed them with a transversal. It intersected both lines, and we named pairs of angles. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to use those pairs of angles to determine a relationship between them when the two lines that are crossed over are parallel, right? We're trying to use that transversal and the angle pairs that we created to determine whether the two original lines that I crossed over with the transversal are indeed parallel. So corresponding angles. Corresponding angles we will find are congruent. This is what we went over in class. We determined that they were congruent. That means they're the same. They're of equal measure. Alternate interior angles are also congruent. Okay, so alternate on alternate sides of the transversal and on the inside of the two lines that are being uh, crossed over. Alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Well, that's easy. So if it says alternate, I know that they're going to be congruent and corresponding are also congruent. Consecutive, if they're on the same side at all, they're going to be supplementary both. Supplementary means adds up to 180 degrees, right? Supplementary. So same side interior and exterior angles are supplementary, okay? And recall from unit one that vertical angles are always congruent, right? Vertical angles, right? If I cross over like this, this is angle one, that's angle two. Those are vertical angles, and they are congruent. They are of equal measure, and and uh, angles that form a linear pair are always supplementary. So a linear pair would be two angles that are adjacent, so they share a side like this, right? Two, if they're a formal linear pair, they're touching, they're sharing a side, and they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so let's go to the first example. It says identify the angle pair as congruent or supplementary, give your reasoning. So all we have to do is identify what angle pair we're talking about. If we, th if we look at three and five, three and five, well, they're on the inside of the line, so they're interior, and they're on opposite sides of their transversal, so they're alternate interior. If I look up, up top, alternate interior says they're congruent. So I write down they're congruent. They're the same. They have the same measure. That's what congruent means. And they're called alternate interior angles. So let's look at 1 and 8. 1 and 8. They're on the same side of the transversal and they're on the outside of the two lines being crossed over. So they're same side exterior, and same side exterior I saw up top is supplementary. So I'm going to write down supplementary, and they are consecutive interior. Or, I'm sorry, consecutive exterior. Same side exterior. You can also write down same side. Okay, let's look at angles 2 and 6. Angles 2 and 6, they're in the same spot, right? So they're corresponding angles. I know that, and corresponding angles are congruent. They're congruent, and they are corresponding angles. And by the way, I hope you notice that these two lines over here are indeed parallel. That is what's different from the previous video. In the previous video, the two lines that were being crossed over, they weren't necessarily parallel. We were just naming the angle pairs. But here we're assuming that they are because of the arrows that we have over here. These are parallel. So everything that we're figuring out here only applies when those two lines are indeed parallel. I already know that they're parallel, and therefore I can determine how the angle pairs relate to each other. Okay? So angle 1 and 7, angle 1 and 7 over here, they're on the outside, they're exterior, and they're on the opposite side of the transversal, so they're alternate exterior, and I know that anything that alternates is going to be congruent, so congruent, alternate, exterior, and then you have angles 4 and 5, 4 and 5, well they're on the same side, and they're on the inside, so they're same side interior, or consecutive interior, and we know that anything that's same side is going to be supplementary. Supplementary, same, I'm just going to write down same side, you can do consecutive, same side, uh, 4 and 5, interior. Okay, 3 and 7, 3 and 7, corresponding, right? So that's congruent, they're in the same corner, so they're corresponding. 
And then you have 5 and 6. 5 and 6 over here. How do they relate to each other? 5 and 6. Well, they're not one of the angle pairs that we saw before. Right? The angle pairs would be 5 and 3. That's alternate interior. Would be 4 and 5. That's same side interior. We didn't call this an angle pair. We didn't give it a specific name. But we do know that there are two angles that form 180 degrees together. They're next to each other. They share a side. So they're a linear pair. So they are supplementary. because they're a linear pair. Okay, So they don't have a special name, but they are a linear pair. That's their special name. Angles 2 and 4. 2 and 4, ah, again, we didn't give them a special name in the previous uh, video, but we know from experience that if you cross two lines like this, they intersect like this, the angles opposite on the intersection are congruent, and they're called vertical angles. vertical. Okay, awesome. So let's go to the next page and let's use, let's use our newfound skills to try and figure out some answers over here. So on the next page we actually get the measure of one of the angles. So it says the measure of angle 6 is 142 degrees and then we want to determine the measure of all the others. It just didn't print out very well. That's angle 8, that's angle 7. Okay, here we go. So um, let's start with 6. 6 is over here, right? And I know that it's 142. I'm just going to be simple. I'm going to write it down over there, right? That helps me out. I know that these two are parallel, right? I first have to determine that. They're parallel. Otherwise, I won't be able to use the angle pairs to determine the other angles. Well, how do 6 and 1 relate to each other? They're vertical, and vertical angles are congruent. Okay, so what I'm going to write down is 1 is 142. And why? Because it's vertical. Vertical to 6. Can you read that? Yes, I think so. I'm going to switch over to pen again. So, okay, that was an easy one. Well, let's try 2 over here. How do these two relate over here? Well, we know they're a linear pair. They add up to 180 degrees. So if this one's 142, then 2 has to be the difference, which is 38. So angle 2 measures 38 degrees. Why? Because it's a linear pair. Linear pair to angle 6. And then let's look at angle 3 over here. Well, how does it relate to 6? It's alternate on the opposite side of the transversal, and it's interior, alternate interior, and we know that they're congruent, so this has to be 142 degrees. Alternate interior to angle 6. So let's look at angle 4 over here. So how does angle 4 relate to angle 6. Is there a direct relationship to angle 6? Hmm, not direct, right? But it does relate to angle 3, right? Because angle 3 and angle 4 form a linear pair. Right? We know that. So we can write down um, that it has to be supplementary. So it's 38. So it's a linear pair to angle 3. And then we go to angle 5 over here. Well, angle 5 over here, that's the same as angle 2, right? It's a linear pair with angle 6. You've got to choose your reasoning. Let's do it with vertical. I don't know. So it's the same as angle 2. Angle 2 is 38 up there, so it's going to be 38 degrees. So it's a vertical to angle 2. And let's try angle 7 over here. So angle 7, angle 6 and 7, they're on the same side of the transversal. They're on the inside, so they're consecutive interior. And we know them to be supplementary, so it adds up to 180. So if angle 6 is 142, then this has to be 38. So it's same side interior, consecutive interior, interior to angle 6. And then we have over here um, angle 8. Well, angle 8, how does that relate to angle 6? Well, they're corresponding, right? They're in the same corner. So that would have the exact same measurement and corresponding to angle 6. Okay, awesome. Let's move on to 5 over here. Ooh, it's looking more complex. Fun, fun, fun. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out which of those lines are indeed parallel. And we see these little arrows over here indicating that this line is parallel to this line. These lines are clearly not parallel, right? Because they cross over each other right over there. So they're not going to be parallel. But we have to use the fact that these two are parallel when we're trying to solve this problem, right? 
So the first says angle 12, the measure of angle 12 is 121. So let's find 12, it's over here. So this measures 121, 121 degrees. I'm going to write that down. And the measure of angle 6 is 75. So over here, measure of angle 6 is 75 degrees. See? Okay, so let's try and figure this thing out. Well, the first thing I see over here is 6 and 1, they're vertical. So 6 and 1 are vertical, that means they're going to be the same. So 1 is going to be 75 as well. Let's see, this one's also vertical. 7 is vertical to 12, so 7 is going to be 121. We always start with the easiest. Right? 12 and 11 are a linear pair, so they're going to add up to 180. So 11 has to be, what is that, 59. So 11 is indeed 59. So these two are also a linear pair, so 8 has to be 59 as well. So 8 is 59. So we got all these in these corners over here. So we got, um, and then we can we can build out from here. We have this corner over here. Let's build out from there. So let's look at this. This is the transversal. It crosses over this line and this line. So I know that these two over here are alternate uh, alternate interior angles. So I know that they're congruent. So four and eight are congruent. If eight is fifty nine, well then four's got to be fifty nine as well. Right. Well, let's see. By the same token. If this is a transversal, it's a different transversal, these two lines are parallel, then this angle and this angle, they're alternate interior angles, so they have to be the same. So I know that angle 9 has to be 75 degrees. Right? But if 9 is 75 degrees, 14 is a vertical angle, so these two are congruent, so this has to be uh, 75 degrees. Let's stay in this corner over here. Right? So these two form a linear pair, so if this is 75, that has to be 105. So angle 10 is 105 degrees. And these two are also a linear pair, but these two are vertical. So 10 and 13 are equal. So this would have to be, they have equal measure when it's equal. They're congruent. They have equal measure. So what are we missing? 2, 3, and 5. So let's look over here. So we have um, 2, 3, and 5. So we have, um, I know that uh, angle this whole angle over here, so 5 plus 6, 5 plus 6 over here, has to have the same measure as 7 over here, right? Because this and this whole angle over here are alternate interior angles with respect to this transversal and these parallel lines. So I know that 5 plus 6 equals 7, okay? I know that 6 is 75, right? I wrote that down somewhere, right? 6 is, seven, oh, that's up here, that was given, 6 is 75, and angle 7 I figured out it was 121. So something plus 75 is 121. So let's see, that's 25, that'd be 46. So that would tell me that angle 5 is 46 degrees. Okay, so I got angle 5. Well, angle 2 is vertical. That's going to be an easy one. That's got to be 46 degrees as well. It's vertical. So the only one we're missing here is angle 3. And angle 3 is vertical to angle 4 over here. And angle 4 was 59. So angle 3 would have to be 59 as well, there you have it. So that's how you reason through these problems. Um, you, you have to find your own strategy. A uh, good thing is to start at one of these uh, corners over here, try and figure out all of these, then see how they relate to others. You have to identify the transversals over here and the parallel lines. Make sure that you understand that these lines are the parallel lines and not these lines. Okay, thank you.